your daughter, Jolie, my stepdaughter, made another pizza. Yeah. Homemade pizza. Best ever. I can show you what it looks like, but not how she made it. Because we're going to do that another day. Yeah. And how did it taste? Oh, it tasted great. It was a little doughy this time. I thought the first time was better. I would agree. It was a little, Good. the crust was a little too crusty. Too much crust. No, it was too doughy. Oh, like it wasn't as crispy. Yeah, it's crispy. Yeah. But it was also, it felt like a thicker crust. But I guess the other one was pretty thick too. Yeah. I like but it it but delicious. It tasted like it was out of a pizza oven. Oh yeah, for sure. We made it in a regular oven. You know, she made it in a regular oven. Well, I have that little tray that's got the holes in it. Is that a secret or something? Yeah. What, because of the breeze? The Yeah, it makes the whole, you know, if you put it like on a cookie sheet, it's always yeah. like soft and gooey um, in the middle. Well, you're, you're that's why you're supposed to put it on the rack, really. But then so, the cheese comes in and then you ruin your, your, you know, you clean your oven out. It's a pain. If you haven't heard, and Phil Keating, who I, is a good friend of mine, had no idea I wrote a book. Shut up. He didn't know I was in a car accident. <laughs> oh, yeah, he called it. And eight. he didn't know I wrote a book. Phil I'm Keating like, works for the Miami Bureau, right? He, he goes, well, yeah, in our Miami Bureau, uh, our Fox News channels, man. He goes, why'd you write a book? <laughs> like, Because I, I have a lot of stories. They're great stories. Uh, you can pre-order it on Amazon. And we're doing a book tour next week. Kelly and I are going to New York City. New York City. New York City. Work's going to be on Gutfeld. Gutfeld on Monday night, next Monday night. Unless something earth-shattering happens between now and then. And then Fox and Friends on Tuesday morning. We're doing a bunch of radio interviews. And then we're doing Greg Kelly on Newsmax on Tuesday night. And a couple other like Zoom things. And then... We're going to Nashville. We're going to do Huckabee on TBN next Friday. Nice. Very exciting. Very cool. So that's all happening. Um, okay, so now we're going to get to the, the stolen identity story. Oh, the yeah. strangest, strangest story. Strangest, so, strangest story. So, and, and I'll just set it up by saying the first is Wait, this I'm guy gonna... who claimed to be your cousin. No, my, I, I'm his aunt. So... My girlfriend, Julie, she just moved out here from San Francisco, my friend Elaine, they're at this place called The Goose. And it's a really fun place for Sunday to watch sports. It's a really cool sports bar on in Costa Mesa. So she's like, and then she meets all these guys and she, uh, this guy sat down out of nowhere. He goes, do you know Kelly Dodd? And, no, she said this to this girl named um, jo Joy uh, Guggenheim. Julie's friend. Julie's friend. Is, oh, Beth. Friend. Beth. Beth Guggenheim. Like, she's like the Guggenheim. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh -huh. So this guy goes, do you know um, Kelly Dodd? And Beth goes, um, no, I really don't know her. I sh um, all my friends are friends with her, but I I've never met her. And uh, uh, she goes, but this girl is, this girl Julie is. And, and Julie goes, she goes, He's like, oh my God, you know Kelly Dodd? She's like, he's like, yeah, I was a friend. I just got done texting with her to see how her husband was doing. He's like, oh my God. He's like, can you believe what happened to Rick? Uh, yeah, she didn't even want to come home from Aspen. And she's like, what? She's like, she got to him the first flight out. Yeah, the next day, the, <laughs> the next, next morning, morning. the first flight right out, out of Aspen. And he's like, no. He's like, she wanted to stay. She went with Candace. So she's thinking... He like she's thinking. Well, he really does. I mean, he's like, yeah, uh, my aunt. She we banter. We have a good banter, but she can be total bitch. So I was like, hmm. So anyway, I'm talk. She calls me. I'm eating at Neiman Marcus with my girlfriend Jody, and she tells me all this. I'm like, wait, what? I'm like, he's like, do you have a brother? Uh, no, a, a nephew, nephew, Eric. I go, no, I have a brother named Eric, but not a nephew. I have one nephew, and his name is Cole, and he's. 20 years old and yeah. he lives in Scottsdale the and weirdest. the one nephew that I have and um and then so anyway he goes yeah I don't live here anymore I live in Corona blah 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 so I go she goes I have his phone number I go give it to me I'm gonna call him so I call him Whatever. and I go hello I go who is this he goes uh who's this and I go this is Kelly Dodd she said it's your aunt Kelly yeah I know she said this is Kelly Dodd and he goes, who, what, who? I go, you effing punk. I'm like, I'm not your aunt. Don't go around town saying I'm your aunt. Like, like, and talking shit. I was like, oh my God. So, uh, so anyway, th that happened. And the guy looks like, I mean, he doesn't 
whatever. He's not your nephew. He's not he's my saying, nephew. He how, looks, why in the world would someone He looks claim, like he's 25. Why would someone claim to be your nephew who's not? I don't know. It was the randomest thing that they would do that. The randomest thing. And then get those text messages. So then... So this morning we get a heads up from one of our friends that someone is claiming to be my social media manager and reaching out to people on Instagram. My my friend Michelle sent me this after I get home from yoga. Can I read it? Yeah, hold on. Okay, her name is, what is it, Lind Lindia Walls? Lindia Walls. She wrote... Hello, you have such a profound impact on Rick Leventhal's career with your comments, love, and support. A thank you text would fail to express our gratitude to you. We love you. Rick would want you to write him personally. Thank you. My name is Lindia Walls, and I happen to be his social media personal manager. She sends this to a friend of Kelly's. And then she wrote her back. My name is Lindia, and I am Rick's personal manager. He requested I connect you with him yesterday. He said he saw your profile while scroll, scrolling through his page and your picture caught his attention. Now, this woman's married to a friend of mine. I mean, she's a friend of ours. Yeah, yeah, Michelle. What the hell is this lady trying to do? Yeah. Oh, I was scrolling through and saw her picture. I want to talk to her. My media, my personal manager's reaching out. What the hell is wrong with this lady? And then wasn't there more? Or was that no, it? No, that was it. So I reported it and I wrote directly to this person I DM'd and said why are you telling people you're my social media manager I don't have a social media media manager and you need to stop right and she gets going on and on and on why are people saying that I'm their auntie and I'm not <laughs> price of fame babe weird I okay. mean and seriously now, weird thank now, god we have a gun several of them now to the real of the day we thought this was super funny we hope you do too. I just want you to pay attention to how the kid tries to tries to like pretend like it was no big deal. He's just the ball boy. Yeah, ball boy. <laughs> <laughs> You're like this hurts. This hurts. This hurts. This hurts. This hurts. This hurts. <laughs> But the way he turns around so fast and assumes the position. <laughs> no, I know the, the no the, the the tennis player. The tennis player turns around. The tennis what the hell player. was that? He's playing it off. He looks down. He's like this. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, in the news now. In the news. Todd Chrisley begins his sentence. Good. Reality TV star Todd Chrisley reported to federal prison on Tuesday to begin his 12-year sentence, and he couldn't have asked for a better place to serve. Why? FPC Pensacola, a minimum security facility in Pensacola, Florida, has been labeled one of the cushiest in America. Shut up. But you're still confined. The facility, which opened in 88, is usually reserved for white-collar crime that includes wire fraud, mail fraud, and health care fraud. Prominent defense attorney Alan Ellis described the prison as a pretty laid-back experience and idols more along the lines of a camp. Former U.S. Representative Chris Collins, who served New York's 27th Congressional District from 2013 until his resignation in 2019, was sentenced to 26 months there for insider trading and making false statements to the FBI. If I had to do time, that's one of the places I'd want to be designated to, Ellis said. These federal prison camps are much better to be at than any other federal prisons. Perks of the prison include inmates getting to play racquetball, volleyball, and horseshoes. Oh, wow. They can even gather at the, Fancy. In, the, in the prison theater for movie night. Shut up. I'm going to start laughing again. It has every... They have movie night in prison, in regular prison. Well, in the movies they do. I don't know if they do in real life. I don't know either. It has every dumbbell and barbell that you could imagine. Tim Donahue, a former NBA referee who pleaded guilty to two gambling-related charges added, describing the prison as clean and safe. Many of the inmates are either white-collar criminals or drug offenders serving the tail end of long sentences after getting moved to Pensacola for good behavior. Oh, wow. This guy's going in day one. He's, he's, he's in Do you this. think El Chapo will be there soon? No. I say the odds are against it. <laughs> I don't get why you use tax dollars to do that, to pay all these guards, pay all those doctors and nurses and all those people that are there, when you really could just put these people on house arrest, Donna Hay said. Yeah. Meanwhile, a 2016 blog post. That would be worse. House arrest? Yeah. Uh, I prefer that. Yeah. 
when I, I guess, but I'm just saying you're only you can't go out of your own house. Oh, you're you're yeah. going stir crazy as it is. I am. Get me out of here. No, I like it here. Oh, you're <laughs> home. Um, one guy said his day consisted of making coffee, watching CNN, reading, playing a Sudoku, Sudoku puzzle, and being able to talk to his wife daily. He was also able to check his email regularly and work out. Neil's apparently are pretty good too. Uh, Chris Lee was sentenced to 12 years. His wife, Julie, is serving a seven-year sentence at FMC Lexington, Kentucky, which is described as an administrative security federal medical center with an adjacent minimum security satellite camp. So I think she probably has some of the same benefits. Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah. Sounds fancy. And one of your good friends, the Real Housewives of New Jersey star, Teresa Judice, says she's moving to California in four years. Oh, good luck with that. We're leaving. We won't be here when you get here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she revealed on Wednesday's episode of her Namaste Bitches podcast. Namaste. Sorry. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> Namaste Bitches podcast. And she plans on relocating to the West Coast in four years. Listen, I want to move by you. I guess that whoever she was talking to was in L.A. I want to move by you because, like, this weather is so crappy, she tells her Los Angeles-based co-host, Melissa Feister, do you know who that is? Mm-mm. Uh, like today, it was pouring rain this morning, and I was just like, oh my God. I'm thinking about you. I'm like, Melissa's in the sunshine. I'm like, I want to be there with her. The Bravo Liberty adds that she told her husband, Louie, they are making the cross-country move once her 14-year-old daughter, Adriana, the youngest of four she shares with ex Joe Judice, finishes high school. I told Louie, four more years, I'm counting down. Four more years until Adriana goes to college. Born and raised in New Jersey, Teresa has starred on RHONJ since its 2009 debut and is going gearing up for next month's season 13 premiere. Speaking of which, we're probably going to recap that show. Mm-hmm. And if you want to sponsor our recaps, email us at rickkellybiz at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube and check out our podcast on Patreon.com, The Rick and Kelly Show on Patreon. Press the like a thumbs up we and the doorbell. It. Yeah. Oh, that's on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on Patreon, we just did our 74th show today. Wow. And it's good. It is. In our humble opinion. <laughs> but we talk about all the stuff we can't talk about here. And there's no commercials. And it's just, you know, direct, straight shooting stuff. I think uh, our, our patrons are very happy. Yes. Are they not? I, they are. So cheers to you guys. Have a smash-tastic evening. Thank you for... Bye, my smashers. Oh, wait. What? Real quick. Um, somebody wrote that that we should have a thing like Jeff Lewis, but I do. My people are called smashers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We have, he has uh, the chumps. He has a chumps. They, mm. She thinks I should name it something else. By the way, I'm doing a book event next month, February 18th, here in Newport Beach at the Barnes & Noble in Fashion Island. Noon on Saturday, February 18th. The and Chumps Jeff are going to be there. Huh? The Chumps are going to be Yeah, the there. Chumps are coming. Jeff Lewis is coming. He said he's bringing some celebrity friends. And we're going to be on his show on Friday talking about it. But we hope if you're in this area, you'll come out. Uh, you'll you'll join our, our party, our book party at the Barnes & Noble. And maybe pick up a copy of Chasing Catastrophe for yourself. And I'll sign it for you. That's right. Thanks, Yay. guys. Thanks, guys. See you. Bye.